So there's a lot of confusion and uncertainty regarding all this COVID-19 stuff and what, if any, supplements you should be taking. One person says one thing, another person says another, and before we know it, we are just sitting there doing, not doing anything because we're overwhelmed with all the information. In other words, we suffer from analysis paralysis, and I'm guilty of this too. Now, before we go over what you can do to help boost your immune system, let's take a real quick look at who is at most at risk for COVID-19, according to the CDC. And quote, older adults and people of any age who have serious underlying medical conditions. Here's some other things. ACE inhibitors or blood pressure lowering medication, using home or long-term care facilities or other high-risk conditions, including chronic lung disease, serious heart conditions, immunocompromised, including cancer treatment. This also includes diabetes, renal failure, or liver disease. Other things listed include poorly controlled HIV or AIDS, prolonged corticosteroid use, or immune weakening medications. So the reason that I told you this is I am still shocked at the amount of people that have no idea who is at most at risk for having these serious complications. Um, some people are unknowingly going out there thinking that they're healthy, and because they have some of these uh, issues, they are actually more at risk, and then also vice versa as well. So uh, people do need to know these things um, uh, before we all f kind of freak out about stuff. So to help you guys out, I've broken it down as best as I can in the simplest form possible to try to pass along some great information from some researchers and some really smart people on the functional and alternative medicine world without going too overboard. So I've read so many articles and watched so many webinars at this point, I'm getting information overload and almost coming to the conclusion that you should just do something. And I guess that is true. Doing something is obviously always better than doing nothing. And before we get started on all this stuff, let me warn you, I might geek out a little bit on you and get a little technical for those of you that like that stuff. Great. Um, if not, at the end, I'll break it down and simplify things for you. So here's what you can do. Now, remember, these are general guidelines and this is not specific medical advice. So there's my disclaimer. Now, first, let me start off with saying this. Beavers are good. Yes, I said Obviously, we don't want to let them get out of control and cause damage, but we don't want to suppress them either. Fevers are our body's natural defense mechanism and helping to burn off the virus um, and actually slows down the replication of those viruses. Generally, there's no need to use ibuprofen. Now, I'm not saying don't use it um, or other fever reducers. However, uh, generally tempid baths, wa wet washcloths is generally good enough to bring down the fever just enough to where uh, it's not gonna cause damage and you can still have the benefits of having the fever. So if you do use the fever reducers, maybe think about not using a full dose and use just enough to bring the fever down just a little, little bit, but not all the way. So let's get going on what I think are some of the currently top things you can do to help minimize your risk of getting the COVID-19 and minimizing the side effects of COVID-19 should you get it. So number one, for the majority of the population, COVID-19 is not a big deal. Many of us won't even know if we have it or not. The biggest issue for most people is having some sort of comorbidity illness and being on ACE inhibitors for blood pressure is one of those. COVID-19 enters the cells through those ACE receptors. So if you're on an ACE inhibitor and you have more receptors, the virus theoretically has more of a potential to get into your cells and replicate faster and cause more of the cytokine storm uh, that is often associated with the mortality rate of COVID-19. So if I wasn't clear enough, number one is try to address your underlying health issue first, because if you have a comorbidity, that makes COVID-19 worse. So here's some other things that you can do. Zinc. It's been shown to have a direct inhibition of rhinoviral receptor binding and replication. Basically, it helps to prevent the virus from binding to the mucous membranes in your nasal cavity and to the inhibit the replication of the virus if it does. Common dosages are anywhere from 5 to 30 milligrams, sometimes higher. Next one is vitamin D. Oh, vitamin D, how I love thee. Let me count the ways. This is just about one of the best things you can do for your overall health specifically the immune system. It is a great modulator. Basically, it helps to balance things out. It will lower your risk of lower respiratory infections, decrease autoimmunity, help regulate cytokine production, 
which may be part of the reason for the severity of COVID-19 in some patients. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, later, uh, or I might do another blog, uh, we'll see. A minimum level for boosting immune system is a blood level over 40. Supplementing with one to 2,000 IUs is generally pretty safe, but generally not enough to get you over that 40. Now for a lot of my patients, I routinely go up to five to 10,000 IUs per day, but these are in patients that have had their levels tested. Now, rightfully so, some patients are nervous about going to the labs to get their labs done, which I can assure you is very safe. Number one, they're going to be cleaning everything like crazy. Number two, most people that think they have it are going to the ER, urgent care, or hospital. They're not going to the labs. Number three, the test is done by a doctor and they swab the back of your nasal cavity. If you still don't like the idea, we do have a lab option that you can do at home for your vitamin D testing, not for the COVID-19 yet, although it is coming out. And just this week, we are now getting reports that they are doing, uh, are coming out with IgG and IgM antibody testing for COVID-19 to see if you currently have it or if you've had it in the past which I think actually a lot of people are going to have already been exposed to this and they probably already have high levels of antibodies from previously being sick. And for those people, you're golden. You're not going to get it again. So for that home vitamin D test, it's very simple. All you do is just prick your finger. You put a little couple dabs on some circles on this uh, special type of paper. You send it into the lab and they measure your vitamin D levels and you can get those results in generally about a week or two. Um, I think it's a $65 test or something like that, so it's not too bad. So the next one is vitamin C. There have been all kinds of articles all over the uh, place on this one. They're even doing this all over the country and in hospitals. They're giving IV vitamin C. It's interesting when that there isn't some uh, magical drug or uh, cure to treat something. We turn to things that in the past many people have said uh, had no effect. So I usually recommend uh, about one to three grams per day or even up to your tolerance. A lot of people can get up to uh, tolerance uh, with a fairly high amount of vitamin C. And basically what you do is you take as much vitamin C until you get diarrhea and then you back off a little bit. Now this one in our office has just been flying off the shelves because I think everybody's gonna see the articles. Um, this is on back order for us right now, but we are finding other sources of vitamin C that are uh, very good. And some of them also have other things that work synergistically or they work together. So which is quercetin, which is one of the things we talk a little bit about. Another way that you can take this that is very effective is also liposomal vitamin C. So it's a lot more uh, absorbed. Um, again, this is another one that's back ordered. Vitamin A is another one that we often recommend. It's actually used and recommended by the WHO, the World Health Organization, for measles at 200,000 IUs per day. Uh, for adults and 100,000 I use per day for infants uh, for two days when you have measles. Uh, so far, those are the basic recommendations. Some more specific ones based on research and anecdotal evidence from many practitioners uh, include the use of some of the following stuff. So number one is elderberry. Now, if you read any articles, there's been a lot of uh, controversy on uh, and press on don't use elderberry. Uh, some doctors are saying don't take this because it might cause or exacerbate a cytokine storm associated with COVID-19 virus. There is no evidence of this actually happening. At most, elderberry might increase cytokine production from about 1.3 to 1 time, 1.6 times normal which sounds like a lot. However, for a cytokine storm to occur, this typically happens at around 6,000 times normal. So to be safe, I've been recommending if you are going to take elderberry, take it in con conjunction with other things that help to balance out some of, the, some of its effects and it allows you to take lower doses. This is how I use most of our supplements. I don't use large doses of one thing. I'm not fully against it, but I don't totally agree with it. I like mixtures of things so you can use lower doses to minimize potential side effects while boosting certain properties when they are combined. For example, other ingredients that may show promise in helping to deal with COVID-19 include angiographis. This is often used for cold and flus. It's also been shown to be helpful in relieving and reducing symptoms of upper respiratory tract infections. It can also shorten the duration of coughs, sore throats, and sick days in general. 
It also has an anti-inflammatory, which could help decrease the potential of cytokine storm and the activity of phospholipase A2, PLA2, which we'll talk about this one later. Astragalus is another plant that has been shown to be helpful for respiratory tract infections. It helps modulate the immune system and is involved in the expression of proteins involved in immune function. A particularly helpful supplement that we like to use is Immunotone Plus and WGP, whole glucan particle, first line. Links are in the uh, description provided down below. Quercetin is another helpful immunomodulator. There is actually a good amount of research with quercetin being helpful against influenza, the flu, and SARS. It is also an anti-inflammatory and can help increase glutathione levels. And without getting too long-winded, I'm just going to list some things that can be helpful because I want to talk a little bit about phospholipase A2 and its role in all of this as well. So some other things to look at are colostrum, EGCG, echinacea, transfer factor, stinging nettle. Quick little thing here on phospholipase A2, also known as PLA2. What is it and what does it have to do with COVID-19? PLA2 belongs to a super family of enzymes that is very pro-inflammatory. So what this enzyme does is it hydrolyzes fatty acids or it breaks those fatty acids. Fatty acids are the building blocks of fat in our bodies from the very cell membranes of your cells all the way to the fatty acids that make up the myelin sheath of your nerves. This marker has also been shown to be elevated in MS and Alzheimer's patients. One theory is that COVID-19 increases PLA2 with essentially breaking those fat molecules and turn them, turns them into a detergent or soap-like substance in the body, which further degrades substances in your body, creating an inflammatory cascade or possibly triggering a cytokine storm. So in order to reduce this, there are some things that you can do or take to help reduce PLA2 production. Fish oils, niacin, CDP choline, cysteine 5 diphosphocholine another one is vitamin e or even better alpha tocotrienol vitamin c and other things that can increase pla2 include candida yeast allergies trauma digestion issues so again if you have any of those issues it's probably a good idea to get those taken care of in addition to possibly taking a few of the above mentioned supplements during this uncertain time and for those of you that don't know, we have been and are doing, still doing, online appointments for those of you that prefer not to come into our office. Until next time, wash your hands, be safe, don't go crazy listening to all the news. I'm Dr. Craig Mortensen. Be healthy, be happy.